will make the most of our present leadership by accelerating the use of space satellites for worldwide communications. Space is open to us now, and our eagerness to share its meaning is not governed by the efforts of others. We go into space because whatever mankind must undertake, free men must fully share. Before 1982, any ship in distress at sea that lost its onboard communications gear, or any aircraft that strayed off course and crashed in a remote area away from regular flight paths, had little chance of being found and the survivors rescued. Many simply disappeared without a trace. A group of dedicated scientists and engineers from the United States, Canada, France, and Russia would change that and in the process, revolutionized search and rescue worldwide. Before we had the satellite system, but we did have ELTs. You, you could be in parts of the uh, country that uh, was very little air traffic. If you had an accident, you might go several hours before an airplane would even go by or hear your signal going out. Really what you had is a call for help on the radio, or they were overdues. And heaven help you if you're out looking for an overdue, because they could literally be anywhere. You're just searching square miles of open ocean. In the 1970s, researchers and scientists from the United States and other countries began exploring the use of satellites to provide support for search and rescue activities. They believed that satellites could be used to tip the balance between life and death for mariners and air crews in distress. The idea was the satellite going overhead, any point on Earth would be seen at least four times a day. One man, Bernie Trudell, a mid-level NASA mission manager, would become the driving force behind the use of satellites for search and rescue in the U.S. Uh, Bernie Trudell was a superb salesman. Uh, Bernie was just a great person, tremendous energy, and he pulled together really all of the uh, factions, if you like, one of the stories is that uh, the reason it's called Kospa Sarsat is Bernie wanted something. So it was Kospa Sarsat instead of Sarsat Kospas. NASA found out that Canada was on the same track. They joined forces and looked for other partners in order to achieve a truly global distress alerting satellite system. In those days, the, the Russians were the other space power they had polar orbiting satellites. Everybody realized that if we could combine the systems in some form, then each country would only have to put up half the number of satellites to cover the Earth. So it became important to have partners who had space capability, and the Russians had space capability. So had the French. France's contribution is the receiver processor for 6 megahertz, which associated with the Canadian search and rescue repeater provide for the, the Sarsat part of the Cosmos Sarsat space segment. The U.S. and Russia, after the Apollo-Soyuz mission, were looking for other ways to cooperate in space. Since this mission was humanitarian, it was search and rescue related, it was easy to, for the two countries to try to work together and uh, develop the system. I don't know any other program of such kind uh, which was developed in the Cold War years uh, and it continued now for more than 15 years. On June 30, 1982, Russia launched the first experimental Kospas Sarsat satellite. What happened next would make history and change search and rescue forever. While we were checking the system out is when the first save came. The system hadn't even been declared operational and we had a, uh, a downed uh, aircraft we picked up, I think it was Canadian aircraft. The impact of the experiment was immediate and dramatic. In its first 100 days of operation, seven people would owe their lives to this satellite system. I think is, is because everybody was so exuberant that, uh, uh, you know, that the things they'd been working on were, were, were so successful. The following March, NASA sent up the first U.S. SARSAT payload on NOAA-8. Search and rescue entered the space age. Imagine you're on a ship, a small vessel, crossing the Atlantic. 
Then, in the middle of the ocean, for whatever reason, you have to abandon ship. So, here you are, thousands of kilometers from land, alone in the water. There is only one system capable of finding you. That system is Cospa Sarsat. Since the international Cospas sarsat program agreement was signed in 1988, the four original parties of the agreement have been joined by over 30 additional countries. And before we had the satellite system, it could take up to 24 hours before a search and rescue uh, center could be notified of a distress. With the satellites, this time, and in particular with the uh, use of geostationary satellites and the complementary use of the GPS positioning system, this time has been reduced to a few minutes, uh, sometimes less than two minutes. And it's, it seems to me a very uh, significant improvement. Advancements in space and navigation technologies continue to create new opportunities for COSPAS SARSAT. Possible next-generation satellite systems are being proposed and studied in the United States, Europe, and Russia. There are certain improvements that come along in technology that just wipe out what was here before. Uh, speaking from NASA's point of view, um, the opportunity here is recognizing that uh, an existing instrument can be slightly modified to perform another function. By adding SAR receiver payloads to the same MEO satellites that make GPS possible, at least four MEO SAR equipped satellites would be in view of any point on Earth at any given time once the system is fully operational. Uh, it will allow us the opportunity at a uh, a very decreased cost uh, to launch uh, at least 24 satellites with this 406 megahertz repeater function. This coverage would give mission control centers the unprecedented ability to detect and accurately locate emergency distress beacons almost instantaneously. The lasting legacy of all the pioneers of this satellite system is hope hope where once none existed. For all those, past and present, who have participated in the development and operation of both SARSAT and COSPAS, that hope is measurable. Over 22,000 people and counting have been saved because of their efforts. And in the process, they have made search and rescue efforts easier and safer for those who go out, putting their own lives at risk to save others. You know, the only thing that you can say as a, as, as a search and rescue professional is thank you. Without that forward-looking vision, uh, we might still be doing business the old-fashioned way. And that's go out, uh, spend a lot of money, spend a lot of gas, burn a lot of holes in the sky, uh, looking for folks, and, and the clock is ticking on their lives.